Hey everyone, let's take a look at our next problem. It's another multiple answer and we're transforming a function. So as we start to go through this, it looks like I need to get my new function g of x. It's gonna take this function, my original function, it's going to reflect that over the x-axis. All right, then I'm gonna shift it one unit right, then I'm gonna shift it two units down. All right, so let's, let's break this down. If I'm gonna reflect, ooh, excuse me, that I pinched that on accident. This means I'm gonna multiply by negative one, but we're gonna do it outside the grouping symbols. That's how we get a reflection over the x-axis. When I talk about shifting something one unit right, I'm gonna subtract one. When we're moving left, right, that means we're gonna go subtract inside the grouping symbols. And then if you're shifting up down, in this case down specifically, you're gonna subtract two units but you're gonna go ahead and do this outside the grouping symbols. All right, so let's, oops, sorry about that. There we go. All right, so let's try this. So if I want g of x, the first thing I wanna to remember to do is I wanna multiply my function by negative one. So I'm gonna put that negative outside. Now, inside the grouping symbols, I'm gonna subtract one, and outside the grouping symbols, I'm gonna subtract two. All right, so let's just color code this so we have this. My reflection over the x-axis corresponds to this negative. All right, let me go to uh, green. My shifting one unit right corresponds to this minus one inside the grouping symbols. All right, and then last but not least, my shifting, I should say shifting down. All right, shifting down corresponds to the minus two here. So that's where all of those are coming from. All right, but now let's figure out our function. So I'm gonna have this negative here. Now, if this is f of x over here, all right, and let me go ahead and erase this, what I want is f of x minus one, all right? So if there was an x minus one here, then I need to put an x minus one up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna have one third. It's gonna be the x minus one minus two, and there is my function. This is the function that I'm being asked to create all of the, or to find all these traits for. So, okay, let's do it. Let's start with domain, all right. So I'm starting with domain. You always have to worry about the same three things, right? Fractions, radicals, and logarithms. All right, now we'll get to logarithms in chapter six, but you could have fractions or radicals here, and you actually do have a fraction. If you look at your function, you have a fraction, you have one third, and you have to worry about, any anytime with fractions, you have to worry about when is my denominator equal to zero? And in your case, or in this case, the denominator is constant. I'll actually just circle it over here. This three never zeroes out. It's not like I had one over x minus three, and then if x itself were equal to three, I would have a problem. I don't have that. I don't have a variable in my denominator. I just have a constant, and three is never equal to zero. So I actually don't have to worry about my fractions. I don't have radicals. I don't have a logarithm. So my domain is actually all real numbers, which is fine. All right. Let's go ahead and start looking at our x-intercepts, or at least trying to find them. So anytime you want an x-intercept, you're gonna let y equal zero. And you could also do this on your calculator if you wanted to, but I'm gonna do this by hand. So I've got negative one-third to the x minus one minus two, that's gonna equal zero, okay? Now I'm gonna add two to both sides. All right, and so I will have negative, and then we have one-third to the x minus one, that's equal to two. I need to isolate the exponential term, so I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one. So I'm gonna have one third to the x minus one, that's gonna be equal to negative two. Because my variable's up in an exponent, I'm gonna to wanna to, um, get that out using a logarithm, so I will just natural log both sides. All right, so I'm looking at when is the natural log of one third to the x minus one equal to the natural log of negative two, but you're not allowed to take the logarithm of a negative number, so this does not exist. Oops, that's about to be the letter D, it was terrible. This does not exist. So there are no x-intercepts. That's what that is telling us, which is totally fine. That happens pretty often, actually, with exponentials. So we've got none. Okay, great. Let's go find this y-intercept. And just for the sake of, oops, creating a little bit more room, there we go. So let me, this is gonna get rid of this line. Hold on, give me a sec, there we go. All right, so if I want a y-intercept, here I'm gonna let x equal zero. 
All right, so let's see what we have. We would have g of zero, that would be equal to negative one third to the zero minus one minus two. All right, here we go. So this would be, oops, let me put the parentheses around here. This would be a negative, and this would be one third to the negative one minus two. Well, anytime you have a negative exponent, it's gonna be a reciprocal. So this is gonna be negative three minus two, and that's ultimately negative five. So there's my y-intercept at zero, negative five. And I wanna reiterate, you could always check this on your calculator, right? And I can check it in a little bit. All right, the next thing we're gonna have is some end behavior. Ooh, so let me parse that out. Okay, so end behavior. We always wanna take a look at the limit as our function goes left and as our function goes right. All right, so we're gonna have negative one third, oops, parentheses. Okay, and then same thing here. And typically, and you'll see this even in the options here, there's typically an arrow situation and a horizontal asymptote. That's how most, um, at least your basic exponential functions um, map out. So we just have to figure out what's going on. And if we look at the left, we just have to figure out, did I have, uh, am I heading to positive infinity or negative infinity? Negative infinity. And then on the right, am I heading to zero or negative two? Those look like my options. All right, so let's see if we can't figure this out. And I wanna reiterate, you could also graph this. Actually, just for, for fun, or I, uh, just for a, a second viewing of this, let's go ahead and graph it. So give me a moment, let me get out of this. Let's graph this. Let me go with my y equals, clear this out. So I'm gonna do negative uh, one third, and I need to put this in parentheses x minus one, all right, and then I need to go ahead and subtract two, all right? So I've got that, let me hit graph, all right? And just looking at it, first of all, I can see there was no x-intercept, but you can see if I start on the left, right, this thing is, oops, let me touch that there, is heading down, right? So I have left arrow down, and I can see I do have a y, uh, uh, oh, I can use my words, I see my function is, getting to y equals one third or y equals zero on the right. I've got this horizontal asymptote. So let's go ahead and figure out all of this. But I just wanted to show you what it would look like on a graph, right? So I can see left end down, right end, I've got a horizontal asymptote. And we have to figure out is that y equals zero or y equals negative two. And right now, just looking at it, I can see it's not quite hitting the x-axis, right? It, it's, it's, and actually I can zoom this in a little bit. This is looking more and more like y equals negative two to me, just as I look on the graph. Okay, so let's go check out the algebra and see if that matches. So as I start to do this, this would be, oops, let me get the equal sign. This would be a negative of basically one third to the negative infinity minus one minus two. All right, so if you think about that exponent, negative infinity minus one, it's really just negative infinity. All right, I know there's the minus one, but negative infinity is just large. So if this is negative infinity basically up here, keep in mind you have a negative exponent, all right? So if I have a negative exponent, this is really gonna be a negative of three to the infinity, all right, minus two. Three to the infinity is a huge, huge number, and I've got a negative symbol in front of that, so that's a really, really large negative number. I'm gonna subtract two from it. That is ultimately gonna be negative infinity. So I am going to have my left end down. And at that point, I can see what the correct answer is because that's the only option with the left end down. But let's try it as we go to positive infinity. So this would be a negative, this would be one third to the infinity minus one, minus two. So if I'm thinking about negative and I've got one third to the infinity minus two, anytime you have a fraction raised to an infinity, it's ultimately gonna to go to zero. Because imagine if you had one third times one third times one third times one third, you've got an infinite number of these, right? You're gonna have a very, very, very large denominator. Um, I don't remember what three to the sixth is offhand. I think it's like 243. Um, but keep in mind, you're gonna still multiply one third, one third, one third, keep on going. This denominator is gonna get so large that your fraction is basically gonna become zero. But then don't forget that, oops, excuse me, that was an eraser, it wasn't meant to be, that you have this minus two here. So ultimately, this is gonna be negative two. And that's why I have that horizontal asymptote of y equaling negative two there on the right. So there's my end behavior. All right, now with the range, I always like to find the graph first. So I'm gonna pinch or zoom in. 
or maybe technically zoom out so we can see all of this, but I wanna go ahead and I find the graph. Now the graph that looks most like the one um, that we just graphed off of the calculator, and let me return to that. You see there's my graph here. I can see that this is the one that does it. But let me show you other things that I, I would always look for. So I would start with my y-intercept being zero, negative five, and let me pinch this in so we can see it. I see a zero, negative five here, that's good, right? I do not see a zero, negative five here, right? So then that one's out. And then last but not least, I do not see a zero, negative five here, that one's out, right? So I've got the graph figured out, and now let's figure out Let's figure out the range. So I've got this down arrow, yeah, and I've got a right arrow, but this down arrow here is telling me I'm gonna start at negative infinity. Yeah, and as soon as I see that, I can see what the answer is. That's the only option with negative infinity. And don't forget that you have that, and let me color code this, you have this horizontal asymptote at y equals negative two, right? And the function isn't gonna cross that, so that's the upper bound of my range. So. Just to finish this problem out, I would circle this one as well. And now let me zoom out for reals again. And if I take a look, that is how I would do number three. I've got all of my traits circled and I've got some work, some supporting work just, just so I can see where it came from. All right, thanks so much everyone, bye.